okay so i mean uh, have, do you have any questions or anything what the concepts we have discussed so far uh, no uncle not regarding the concepts we have discussed okay but uh, fluids uh, in school school they have start i mean they finish almost finish fluids okay yeah and we have that for the uh, for a test when this coming that? friday this coming friday okay yeah so can we do that yeah did did you try the last problem in the in the forces i have sent you okay i actually don't know where my book is so uh, uh, can i send it after the class okay okay so in the fluids you are saying no 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 i am telling uh, the last forces one ah okay so you you try to work it out yes 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 okay so did you get an answer for that no uncle actually i didn't get the answer okay 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 you can you can you can send that to me yeah a photo or something like that and yes yes that. okay i mean what is happening with the fluid because uh, i uh, tell me what 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 do you find it difficult to understand or the concept or the approaching the problem or what is the uh, uh the concept itself i'm not uh, finding it like that uh, comfortable okay okay i mean uh, i think uh, we are i don't know almost we are meeting for a year time now or uh, i don't know how many how many months we are meeting but it's not that i am just explaining you uh about the concept and also how to solve the problem you should not take it like that it is about okay. when something is there what to be looked into how to give consideration for everything going on there and what sort of mathematical model because there will be a lot of quantities there are measurable quantities and there are other quantities which can be derived do you see that yes sir okay so we need to think from all the perspective and taken care with all the things that will influence the the situation going on and then we need to start deducing the steps and the procedure to calculate the other things or analyze or diagonalize everything we need to see that from that angle okay so if we if we okay i mean there is nothing wrong at your age like uh, trying to get a help as a straight forward help like if somebody explain me if there is a textbook which is explaining me or a wikipedia or a youtube video and everything is still fine to go and get help from there but what we are learning from there is not directly that okay this if you, if you equate this you will get an answer if you equate this you will you if you calculate this you will get a quantity like this we are learning more about why these quantities are equated why the sum of these quantities must be equal to zero or sum of these quantities or the integration of this quantity must be going to one another quantity so that is the way we should ask question behind what is explained to us or what is available to us as knowledge do you see that yes sir okay if we don't do that then it will all at young age it will look like okay i mean if somebody explain or if you watch a video and everything it will give you a a kind of understanding looks like okay i i know this i can do this if your problem asked in this i can do this i can substitute i can get an answer for that but we should not be carried away with that fake courage and confidence do you see that okay okay so when we when we are given a situation or when we are explained with something we need to try to connect with what is going on and how i can understand and analyze more about this by connecting to what i already know something similar to that or something like that that is the way to go forward do you see that yes sir okay do you do you have the the fluids content in front of you the textbook yes sir yeah okay okay can you go from the beginning uh, okay can you tell me the 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 terminology like the wordings and uh, okay yeah can you tell me the from the beginning go one by one yeah yes you you gap okay give me first name yeah yeah what okay. is given to you uh, first is pressure pressure okay so that yeah. is okay that that is a word right like english word yeah. and also technically 
it has a meaning literal meaning and we need to try to connect and explore how that can be extended further with the already knowledge i have so pressure like uh, i mean indians use that word too much time when there is a workload pressure or a stress or something like that they use the word pressure do you get that yes okay and i mean technically pressure means we need to think about okay if somebody is pressing something because workload why we call that as a pressure coming from the boss because that guy is pressing us or pushing us to do something more than uh, what i'm supposed to do so i i have a limit of taking the workload but if it is goes beyond that so the value it got a quantity value also do you see that yes sir so when when there is something like uh, a, a, a fluid like a liquid or a, a gas or something kind of stuff they are not rigid the material and the atom molecules ma making that particular medium the material they are not rigid they have the freedom to move around do you see that yes so automatically when the molecules or the the part of the fluid and or the the, I mean, the gas and the liquid and everything moving around they are going to hit with the neighboring atoms or the molecule of their own kind do you get that yes so there is a we put them in a for, a for example in a container because we are not going to because they are not available freely available like uh, i mean air is available but still we can say that if i am interested about a particular space in which this is a content then we are thinking about a volume of a fluid do you see that yes sir automatically the things will come into picture a volume or something so how you get a volume because you put a container and you are going to put a liquid or a fluid inside that and you have a fixed volume for that and the fluid has the tendency to take the shape of the the particular uh, container do you get that yes sir okay then the volume of the container because that is that is going to be a rigid block inside it is a empty space then we can calculate with the shape of the container what is the volume do you see that yes okay now we are talking about uh, how this volume is going Uncle, to... are you sharing anything no 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 no, no i'm just uh, keep talking okay, okay yeah what do you expect me to share tell me i'm 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 coming from your angle your question is right you are expecting me to share something like i'm i'm writing something yeah yeah that's right i thought you were writing something yeah so so yeah. but did you follow everything what i said yes yes something yes does it make sense Yes, yes. Okay, and also you can visualize whatever I am saying, right? In parallel. Yes. Parallel yeah. processing. Because you see, okay, I mean, if somebody is explaining with a video or something with a picture or something like that, drawing everything, that will help in addition to what somebody is talking, that will give an extra information. And sometimes what you will, we will be more polarized towards that, okay, I will look at the picture and I will start learning myself. That is what happening inside us unknowingly. Do you get that? then we make ourselves that my learning process is like i will watch the video or i will watch the drawing the figure and everything i will learn only from there i mean of course i mean we say that even a proverb like a figure or a diagram can talk thousand words right they say that mm, yeah but how to increase our learning capacity how to even make the thought process analysis better we should not get addicted or polarized towards that okay only this way i can understand and learn they see that okay only if something is lacking like okay now you feel that okay drawing could help or i might be making a drawing or something like that you questioned me of course not i am not drawing anything so when i say something can you in parallel imagine that also keep listening and processing adding that information to your visualization of the diagram what you are thinking and everything can you keep developing that thought process with your analysis and everything that makes the person to grow with the knowledge develop their way of analysis and increase their smartness do you see that yes sir so we should be pushing ourselves towards the taking a challenge <clears throat> like that rather, rather than saying that okay there is a easy way to solve the problem of course these problems and the concepts are already known people know that why we are learning do you see that mm, yes sir okay so now I mean, let's continue that fluid so we have a volume for the, the 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 fluid content and then this having the freedom of movement they can go and hit the neighboring atom or the molecule and it can go and hit the walls of the container 
so don't you think that they are they are actually because if you don't fill the the container with a fluid let's say there is a empty vacuum then the walls of the container won't going to have any kind of pressure or a force created by the the content of the fluid do you see that yes sir okay so now when there is a empty the empty means vacuum vacuum container they don't have any pressure or anything inside that whole volume is a is a vacuum that means nothing even that that space is we cannot even say as a if there is a empty volume do you see that vacuum volume yes sir then you fill it with a particular type of uh, liquid or a gas that we call that as a fluid then we don't even move or uh, move the container or try to give a, something like a pressure or something or, or push it uh, the liquid to do some dynamics they already start doing some dynamics do you get that mm, yes sir the reason why tell me why why they are moving around tell me what is the thought process what makes here if i if i fill here a, a water or a, some kind of liquid into a container the already the molecules are moving around right yes why what makes them to move around uh What? the yeah uh, the pressure which is there inside it yeah you are you are saying that pressure and everything but think more in a way that if something has to move don't you think that they need some force energy? should be out. No, yeah, no, energy should be energy there right okay what causes them to have some energy to move around there has to be a quantity you are saying that there is a force there is a pressure they are all derived quantity coming from somewhere do you get that okay all the force and the pressure all the things goes back all the way to back to the displacement do you see that okay we discuss yes. about that right only if you if you how there is a displacement then we start looking into with respect to time whether the displacement is going to be changing yes if there is a change mm -hmm. then we start making a the differentiation of the displacement with respect to time we call that as a velocity do you get that yes sir then we question whether that velocity is a function of time whether that is also changing with respect to time yeah of course it is changing with respect to time then we we start differentiating that again right yes sir then we call that dv by dt as another new content that is a, a acceleration then we say that okay I mean any mass can have that right it can be a tiny ball or it could be a big football or it could be a, the whole earth itself so the different mass may have different content of the motion isn't it yes sir but they may all have the same value for the a acceleration and the velocity function and also the 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 displacement and everything but the mass comes into picture to tell us what kind of motion content it has okay then we try to yes, see that, okay the motion content in a in, in a particular Uh, atom or a molecule or something whatever it is then we say that the mass multiplied by the velocity will give you the momentum do you see that okay yes okay. now once we have the momentum then we ask the same question okay i now related the the dynamics happening to my object the entity which is the mass and the dynamics is connected like let's say i multiply the velocity then it gives me the motion content do you see that yes sir okay then I mean that quantity is very good because when there is a object at the stationary, then we need to give a push to start making it to start moving. So we need to give a a kind of because that will be lethargic. It will be inertia. There will be it. It says that it will be a lazy object which is staying, staying right. Mm -hmm. Yes. We need to give a momentum for that to move around. Otherwise, it even that will be difficult. So if the mass is very small, then the momentum we give will be very small. to start having a motion and a change in the displacement which which will be velocity do you catch that yes sir so that is how we need to relate not simply because okay because of velocity the object is moving no it's not because of the velocity it is there is a velocity we are measuring or we are talking about do you get that actually in the yeah. real sense there is a displacement happening with the object from there it is all starting do you get that okay then when you have the momentum mass into velocity then we ask the question whether it is time varying yeah sometime it may be time varying that means there is a force acting on that how to calculate that differentiate the momentum with respect to time rate of change of momentum with yeah, respect to time is the is the force we get that yes that is how we 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 we, we get the more quantity and everything but for all of these go back something has to cause this right 
even the displacement yeah. something has to cause let's say there are two masses like earth and an object which is at a height in the earth if you leave it it is going to have a dynamics it is not going to move right yes what makes it to move why it is going down to the surface to the to the to the ground level gravity ah there is always is not only the earth's gravity if there are two masses always there is a force of attraction that is where we start quantifying how the mass plays the role and what is the distance between them plays the role that is how we start quantifying everything do you get that so all the way it goes back to how that particular object gain in potential energy when you take it away from the surface of the earth to a height h already it attained a potential energy do you get that yes sir that energy is actually helping it to go down when we leave it isn't it yeah okay so now we always all the way go back to the gravitational force or gravitational field and attractive force right yes sir that is the mechanism is happening now come to the same thing in fluid dynamics if you keep a a water in a container you you agree with me that the water molecule is going to move around right yes okay then uh, what do you think what what makes them to move around where the energy comes from okay i will give you a clue okay you will see that motion because the motion what we see in the water we, we are not normally seeing that that is happening inside you get that mm, okay but you take the container and start heating up put it on a, over a cooker and start the oh, temperature up. ah you thermal see, energy ah you see the room temperature okay. itself is giving that energy do you get that okay. that is yes. what is giving the energy to go around so that means then when they start going move around that means definitely the dynamics is related to the temperature that is a very important thing like two masses attract each other from where we start looking into everything in fluid dynamics temperature is the main thing which is doing everything even before we start doing other extra force and other other energy we give to that we get that yes mostly mean if if you give extra temperature then it has more energy then it start moving around quite violently then we start seeing the boiling and everything okay and even there is a transformation of because of the temperature the phase itself is changing the phase means p h a s e so yes. the liquid can okay. become a gas or the <laughs> liquid can come down to a solid you get that so then then we are talking about with respect to temperature yes, only things are going on the dynamics is going on and the change of phase is going on and wh why the material has a very specific particular temperature value it is saying that when you reach this temperature i am going to change my phase i am going to convert myself from a uh, liquid state to a gaseous state you get that yes sir. and let's say we have a certain amount of uh, certain volume of a liquid that is made up of the the mass the the moles and everything we can calculate right so when yes. you have a certain amount then definitely with respect to the mass of the quantity we are going to say that when all the mass reaches that temperature you need to keep giving the temperature the material is not going to change the temperature until all of them converted to the new phase let's say water water boiling point is 100 degree centigrade do you catch that yes sir when when we start heating like let's say from the room temperature say that uh, that uh, 28 or 30 degree centigrade we start heating then the heat will be taken and we can measure the temperature is increasing the the, the temperature why it is increasing because the water is happy to move move around and take the energy to enjoy it like it is jumping around dancing around do you get that yes sir then we start connecting that quantity what dynamics is happening then definitely the the amount of pressure they are going to give the amount of how many times they are going to hit with each other and how many times they are going to hit the wall of the container that is a one quantity we can relate it to the temperature right yes sir okay so we call that quantity as our pressure do you get that okay so now we 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 have now with the quantity temperature which is actually doing some dynamics for the for the fluid now we have try to connect that with what has happened to that fluid in terms of like they hit with each other they collide with each other they collide with the they hit the walls and everything as a pressure that means what they are actually create they have a force with them that is take, created from the, the 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 temperature and they go and hit with each other that means the force and the pressure has to be connected you get that 
Yes, sir. Okay, now think about it. How we can connect it? How to connect a force and a pressure and everything? If, if it is going and hitting the surface and everything, we are talking about in terms of area. Do you get that? There is a surface area with the container. Yes. So we are saying if there is a force that is through the temperature, they have the displacement and they can go and hit the walls of the container. And that we call that as a pressure. And if you if you see that there is a, some amount of force, call it as a F Newton, then you just take the, the with respect to the area per unit area. What is the force per unit area? We define that as a pressure. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes. The unit also comes from there. So the pressure will be our, uh, our what I mean, Newton per area. Area unit is what? Area is uh, meter square. Yeah. So the Newton per meter square should be the unit for the pressure. You're okay with that? Yes, sir. But I mean, uh, there is another scientist, Pascal, who did a lot of good job for us scientifically. So we honor him with a name for the pressure as a Pascal, but we should Pascal not also. Also, yeah, always uh, get happy with the Pascal. But whenever we see pressure, Pascal comes into picture, but immediately we need to think that it is a derived quantity. Then it is connected to our force per unit area. Force is a Newton, Newton per meter square. Do you catch that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now also I, I parallelly, okay, I, I share the whiteboard also. Any questions or doubts so far? No doubt. But but does it make sense how we are we are yes, yes. From understanding to how to because it's not that even the teacher even myself I mean I can teach you but it's not that I I am the I'm not something like a god who knows everything do you get that yes. also, I mean I, I with my experience and the the age and everything and the 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 way I worked out things to understand and try to connect them that may show that you. I may be better than you. It looks like that, right? Mm. But what is the real difference? Because the way I learned and looked into and connected and analyzed, that is what making me to explain all these things to you. Don't you think that you should get that rather than getting directly the answer for the question? Do you get that? The way to ask question ourselves and to get the like temperature is the thing which is playing everything. And with the temperature, then it is causing something like move around and going and hitting the wall. We create a pressure and the pressure is, I mean, that, that has to be connected to the force and the, there is a surface area for the walls of the container or where these molecules are going and hit. Then we are going to say that the, the pressure, pressure is going to be related to the force, force per area, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the P is actually F by A. So don't take it as a, I mean, directly as a formula. Like we need to understand this. Like uh, actually speaking, the, the area is something like totally coming from nowhere. Actually, we need to understand that the pressure is directly proportional to the force. Because if you if there is a more force, because if there is a high temperature or something like that, there will be more force. Then the pressure will increase. Do you get that? Yes, sir. So that is what actually is happening. So we related to that. Then when we try to equate, then automatically the proportionality constant, when you equate this, you get a 1 over, I mean, the a K multiplied by F. This happens to be 1 over A. Do you see that? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You catch that, right? Yes. Okay, so once we get that, then immediately, I mean, as I said, the units are important. We say that the, the force per area is the Newton per meter squared. Then we define that as a Pascal, okay? Okay, this is a Pascal. Okay, now think about it. Then definitely the pressure is related to, relay, related to, what? What is the first thing which can relate it to? T, temperature, isn't it? Yes. <clears throat> temperature, that is very important. Then we put up inside a container. There is a volume, that is also very important. Volume, V, volume. Volume. So the P is related to, related to volume. Isn't it? 
okay now 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 go for the understanding when the what is the thing between the p and t if the temperature increase pressure will increase or not Yes, sir. I can't hear you properly. Uncle, can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Okay, so that means they have a direct proportionality, isn't it? Yes. And now, question: What is between the pressure and the volume? When you, when you, when when you, when you take a container and there will be a, a, a certain amount of volume and there will be a certain amount of pressure. Now, what we do? We are just going to reduce the volume by 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 like a like a think like a, a, a cylinder and a piston can you relate that so let's say there is yes, a, 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 a cylinder and there is a piston so we have the outside we have a a kind of a system mechanical system now there is a p1 and a v1 in this position do you get that yes sir. and when you try to reduce the reduce the volume there is a new volume that is Let's say the new volume is V2 and the pressure, new pressure is P2. Definitely the pressure would have changed, right? Yes. Okay. Now tell me how they are connected. So the 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 V1 to V V1 is greater than V2, isn't it? Yes. Because previously it was the, the piston in this yeah. position. This is the one yes. position and this is the two position. So we reduce to the volume. That's why the V1 is greater than V2. Because of that, what will be the relation between the P1 and P2? Increased or decreased? P1 will be greater. P1 is the pressure in the original position of the piston. Now you... you... Oh, no, no, that will be lesser, lesser, lesser. Ah, yeah, you see, you, you, you don't go with the, what is written in the previous line or not go with the anything. Think about it. Do you get that? Yes, sir. The thinking is really important. Okay, if, if you go with the number or something, trying to like use use the in, inequality from here, it won't work. Do you get that? So P one is yes, actually sir. less than the. So that means when the pressure is red, when the when the volume is reduced, the pressure is increasing. And if you go to the let's say if you have pulled pulled up the piston and if you go to a a position which is going to have a third position, we have a P three. And sorry, P3 and V3. Do you get that? Yes. Actually, with respect to the V1, the volume is a this is a lesser volume compared to the V3. In this case, what has happened with the P1 and P3? When the volume got increased, the pressure got decreased. Ah, uh, decreased. So the P1, the original position will, will have a I mean better pressure than the other value. So definitely we have a relationship. P is inversely proportional to the volume. Do you get that? Yes, sir. Okay. And also, I mean, whenever we, we have this, I mean, this can be related directly, like coupled together, they are going to give us P is proportional to T over B. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now this can be written as P is actually equal to some constant because always this is what we are doing with any mechanics mechanics or physics or whatever it is. This is what we mathematically have a model with that. Also, most of the time it is written as PV equal to that constant into T. Isn't it? Some constant. Yes. T. So we got this with understanding and everything. Then we need to go about how to extend this thought process and how to even find the K. Because look at here. Have we considered everything in the system? What I mean is, if you have a fluid and if you have a temperature for that, it is going to give some dynamics for that. That is what we are interested to study. And that is going to be connected with the pressure and the volume. And we related that and we have a model PV equal to KT. Isn't it? Yes. It looks like we have included everything except like maybe the type of the fluid, what we are. It could be a liquid or it could be a gas. Depending on that, they may have certain different property between them and everything, a number of molecules, all those things are there. But that most likely, they are all going to be captured by the K. Do you get that? Yes, sir. Any questions so far? No, no. Okay. Do you see how I am? I'm, I mean, I'm not giving you a straight answer. I'm trying to help you to how to go about uh, even thinking about a quantity or something, how to relate them, how to make like now we have PV equal to KT. 
Now tell me what we can do with this. Do you remember? I mean, I, I have already done this for maybe Ohm's law or maybe for mechanics or something. How to deal with? Now, big question. K is what, isn't it? Mm, yeah. So what, what, what will help us? Other quantities are all, we, we understood what is the meaning of that and we have clear idea about that, right? Yeah. What clear idea we have? Come to the P. What are all the things we know? P is actually equal to? Uh, P, is equal, P, P is equal to RT by V. Got that. No, now you are saying that uh, you, know, you, are, you are going from here. You are not going back to... Because this is what we have as a mathematical model, isn't it? Yes. If you keep going into that uh, whole thing again and again in cycle, that is not going to help us to understand anything about the K, isn't it? No. As a one go, can you tell me, okay, pressure, we said that we understood, we know and what is creating that because of the help of the temperature and everything. With that understanding, slowly we went to and we captured all the quantities that are connected as a PV equal to KT. Isn't it? Yes, sir. So what is new here? K is the new thing, right? Yeah. Tell me what 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 sort of thing we can do. Think about it. How the K can be understood. How to connect back to the system or whatever the thing we are studying. We are trying to analyze. Because that is the one which uh, is relating the PV and the T, right? Uh, yes, sir. So you are not getting a clue. So this is a... No, it should be... Uh, it's it should yeah, be yeah. R. Huh. And with a unit, which is a Pascal, isn't it? Yes, sir. Which is actually a Newton per meter square, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Okay, don't you think that, that units will actually help us to understand what this K should be? Oh, yeah, because pressure will be okay. pressure, volume. units will be Newton per meter yeah, square. Yeah, volume is meter cube. Do you get that? Yes. And the temperature will so, be in whatever the degree Celsius, it could yeah. be or, or it could be our Kelvin. Because the degree Celsius is here. Whenever degree comes, it is a very old unit. Do you get that? Okay. Because we, the, there is a SI unit system and which is all the absolute value. So we need to think in terms of Kelvin also. But we know the relationship between that Kelvin and a degree centigrade. That whenever you have a degree centigrade value, just add a 273, the absolute value we will get to the Kelvin value. We know the conversion. Do you get that? Yes. Let it be. So now we have the unit for all this quantity. Let's try to use that to find the unit for the K. So I will use the same mathematical model. Now this time I will start writing as Newton per meter square multiplied by our meter okay. cube must be, be Newton meter. Uh, yeah, I mean, cancel that thing. But but think about uh, very, that there is a X. Now, why I call that as a X? I call the K units as a X. You're okay with that? Because I don't know yes, what sir. is that. I'm interested about that. From there, I can start thinking about how I can relate that to the, the system, the whole fluid. Okay. <clears throat> and we have a multiplication with a, I mean, I, I, I'm more happy with a Kelvin. I will take a Kelvin. You're okay with that? Okay. Yes. okay. So, this tells us X unit is nothing but Newton meter per Kelvin. Yes, sir. So now think about it. What is this going on? What is this? Newton meter, new, Newton meter alone. Don't you think that this is a force multiplied yeah. by distance? Yes. What is this quantity? What we call this quantity as? When you multiply, let's say if you have two masses, let's say I'm going to, because they have a force of attraction, they, they try to... Moment. Go, what? No, no. Think about it. Like, let's say I have two two masses separated by a distance. Do you get that? Yes, sir. They are going to attract each other. There is going to be attractive force between them. Let's say from this position, I'm going to do a. I'm going to move it to the. Okay, a, a, a distance d, for example. Work, work. Ah, work, work done. Energy. Do you get that? Yes, that is why yeah. we do the force multiplied by distance. I have to give a force. I have to do a job. Yes. I have to do your work. Yes. I need to spend some energy to get this done. So this thing actually is our energy. Okay. So because of that, this Newton meter per Kelvin is saying energy per unit temperature. Do you get that? Yes. Sir. So indirectly we can understand, okay, all the things started from the temperature. So 
if you if you increase the temperature there is going to be increase in the energy if there is a decrease in the temperature there is going to be decrease in the energy so this constant is actually relating the unit the energy the rate of change of energy with respect to temperature do you get that yes sir. okay so now that is what is helping us to even understand like how to go about that so now even we have a unit for that so like that k is going to be now we need to relate that this is going to have a energy per temperature sorry this will be t okay i, I keep writing here. so this is a t temperature you are okay with that so this is temperature yes. yeah. temperature so this is w by capital t so now we know that this is a newton meter per kelvin right yes okay now these things can be related to the material the dynamics uh, the the container and uh, the, the 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 property of the fluid the k is actually fixing the property of the fluid okay so this connected to the property or the characteristic of the fluid property of the fluid okay so this one simply we 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 connect with the other things it could be connected to the number of molecules in the fluid do you catch that yes sir okay and that that uh, how to connect that with some measurable quantity because mostly what we measure is the mass not directly the number of molecules do you get that yes then we need to try to connect that okay if the number of molecules is connected to the mass there may be relation between them which which one you you what, what thought process comes into your picture how the mass and the number of molecules of a fluid are related mass and number of molecules. in chemistry you might have learned something moles ah moles and everything do you see that that is where yes. how why we are learning all those stuff so eventually the k is going to be n r do you get that n r yes okay so the n is what number of moles uh okay again this whole thing should have a unit newton per you see we cannot go away from this okay that has to be there so this yes. we are saying that a number of moles number of moles right yes so this unit will be what the unit of the n will be it moles is is a moles or uh, or it can be related re related to mole is what number of number uh, of molecules you, you are saying that it can mass by molar mass okay mole so you are saying that this could be in terms of mole right yes okay so now we have a question what is the mole itself mole itself is tell me the unit uh, tell me the definition mole is equal to there is a mistake happened here do you get that can you tell me the definition first of all uh, i will go with that okay i i am saying that this is number of okay i i i will i will even remove this okay we need to know this this is what we are what is n and what is r we are questioning that do you get that all we know is if you multiply them the unit must be newton meter per kelvin do you get that yes now tell me what is what 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 we know about the number of molecules so we we have a definition mole is calculated as what what is the definition for the mole from there we can go avogadro number of uh... no tell me the tell me the definition for the mole it is connected to the atomic weight atomic number and number of molecules right yes, what is the mole definition not sure i No, exactly. you, see, you need to know that because I did chemistry long time ago. Do you get that? Yes. Okay. How to help with your son? <laughs> okay. Yes, uncle. I'm... Okay. what is the definition of the mole uh, oh. huh? hello uh, yes uncle uh, it's 
precisely 12 grams of carbs in 12. I'm not sure of the exact uh, Yeah, you see, you are, you are not... Uh, when we when you learned the mole, you used in a lot of formula in chemistry and worked out a lot of things. Even you might have secured a lot of marks with that. Do you get that? Mm. But you never put into thought process that, okay, when it comes to substance like liquid or uh, any gas, the mole is playing a vital role connecting with the Avogadro number. Isn't it? Mm. Yes, sir. Avogadro number. Ah, so that is where we need to start thinking, okay, molar mass, how the molar mass and the number of molecules and the mole and the Avogadro number all connected. You get that? Yes, sir. So that understanding only molar mass definition, that is very much needed, right? Yes, sir. And that is what is connecting the, the actual mass and the through the some kind of understanding which is coming from the 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 Avogadro number. Do you get that? Yes, sir. Okay. So, there is a mo molecular mass and mass number. Do you get that? So, there are yes, sir. different quantities. So, we need to have a good understanding of all this stuff. Otherwise, it is going to be difficult for us. Do you get that? Yes, sir. Okay. So, different different so what is the molar mass it is actually what you, you know the definition of the molar mass molar mass is not, um, mass of one mole of a substance okay mass of one, one molar mass is mass of one mole of a substance okay then it comes that what is the meaning of one mole do you get that mm, yes sir. okay that is how we need to ask question to ourselves and so okay i i i mo, molar molar mass okay so that is actually the mass per mole you get that yes sir that leads to mass i think you have good understanding you know what it is it is in kilogram units and we have a very good understanding about that. Now the question is, what is a mole? Do you get that? Yes. Sir. Okay. Then R is actually mean. I said Reynolds, Reynolds number. That is not right. R is a universal gas constant. Do you get that? Yes. R, sir. R is a universal. This is actually, uh, I, will, I will clear that because it is a universal gas constant. Universal gas constant. So now, the universal gas constant will have a unit, but that is also derived from this, the big picture from coming from here. Do you get that? Yes. So when we fix the n unit, what is the n with the understanding? Now we go for the question for the mole. Then to get an answer for that, we will get an Avogadro number. Are you okay with that? Yes. So I'm not going to completely explain this to you because I want to cover something more in the fluid dynamics. Uh, do you catch the point, what, what I'm saying to you? How yes, to sir. connect them and relate that? Then once we have a good understanding, let me go to our next page. Here, now we have a PB equal to NRT. Okay, then we yes. can start doing a lot of calculation with that depending on what is known to us and what is happening to the system and then how to connect and relate and calculate other things. Do you get that? Not simply yes. substituting the values. Do you get that? Yes. Okay. So that is, that is all like, let's say, at, at a constant temperature. At a constant temperature. Do you have a good understanding from the model? That is the question. So at constant temperature means what? The N is going to be a constant and R is going to be a constant and T is also going to be a constant. Isn't it? The PV will also be a Ah, the P multiplication, V will be a constant. That means what? Let's say there is a P1, V1 pair and it changed to, changed to P2, V2 pair, but their product has to be constant. That means P1, V1 must be equal to P2, V2. This should P2. be understanding. Sometimes we write it as P1 over P2 equal to V2 V2 over V2 over V1 also. But all comes from this particular mathematical model. You get that? This is important, understanding of that. You're okay with that? Yes. 
okay so now if you say that another scenario yes. this is scenario one scenario two at constant volume okay still the pb equal to nrt still works good there is no question about that right yes but the b is a constant so rearrange this equation in a way that keep all the varying quantity function quantity functional quantity whichever is changing with respect to something functional quantity on one side write the other quantity on the other side n r by v you are okay with that yes so now the p over t must be a constant isn't it so that means yes. if you have a pair let's say there is a when pressure is at when temperature is at uh, t1 if the pressure is p1 if this changed to a different temperature then if the pressure is going to change as a p2 definitely it has to change then we are going to say p1 over t1 must be equal to the p2 over t2 must be equal to that constant value whatever it is that is going to be our n r by v so in this case it is going to be a constant which is going to be our n r t constant which is our n r t do you see how we are thinking and n R T, are okay with that? Yes. So when the problem given to you, can you use the problem? Also, we can do the third third analysis. The pressure can be constant. You get that at a constant p. Then change in the yes. temperature will change the volume. Okay. So the same P V equal to N R T is fine. So now we are going to as P is constant, we are going to say mm -hmm. that V over T must be equal to N R by P. then that is our constant then if you have a pair of v1 at a temperature t1 changing to v2 to a temperature t2 then the v1 over t1 must be equal to v2 over t2 which is equal to our constant now this constant is actually n or constant divided by the constant pressure is it okay yes okay so here because of this relationship we are saying that p is proportional to 1 over v inversely proportional this is going to tell us that p is directly proportional to t you understand that meaning this meaning is when the at the constant temperature when the pressure is increased the volume will reduce when the pressure is re reduced the volume will increase do you understand that yes in this case when the volume is constant when the pressure is increased the temp I mean when the temperature increase pressure will increase or pressure will increase temperature will increase or decrease they both decrease you get that yes so this one is telling us this one is going to tell us is p is in v is inversely proportional to temperature for all purpose we need to understand this okay any question so far no question okay now i i i add the other other important concept i said the phase change okay phase change phase is always something like like angle change is also called phase but here we are talking about the material type so it could be from the gas uh, solid going to liquid going to gas okay or vapor you are okay with this yes okay how to convert a solid to a liquid we are going to melt that so the temperature at which it is going to melt we call that as a melting point melting point okay so this is a with a unit kelvin are okay with that yes and the liquid going to your gas what that is what point is that uh boiling point ah uh, boiling point and this also in terms of kelvin so here one important concept is when you have a solid let's say there is a 1 kg of solid and if you try to melt it to become a liquid nothing is going to be lost the mass will be still maintained you get that yes okay. but you see there is a melting point 
take for example we are talking about water as an example then we are taking the ice and we are going to use a 0 degree celsius and that is actually equivalent to the 273 kelvin at which it will start melting we get that yes but we need to give some work because through the temperature actually we are we are doing the work do you see that because anything yes. below 0 degree centigrade it is all going to be a ice solid they, they they are actually intact so the temperature is actually giving a temperature for the system there is no pressure inside the ice because it's solid we don't call any pressure or any, anything to that do you get that yes if it goes to the fluid fluid form we start looking after that so now the ice is going to melt at 0 degree centigrade so now until let's say you take 1 kg of ice and until all the 1 kg of <coughs> ice converted to the the water <laughs> 1 kg the temperature of the system will maintain at 0 degree centigrade which is equivalent to 273 kelvin you understand that yes okay so now we will be giving more 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 temperature but the temperature won't change but but it will it will use the energy do you get that yes so whatever the I mean we, we will try to keep increasing the energy we are thinking that we are going to increase but until the phase change complete to completely a water the whole system the mixture of the ice and the water temperature will be maintained at zero degree centigrade so it will eat some energy until it completely converted to the water then we call that as the latent heat of do you know that there is two latent heat latent heat of fission and the latent heat of fission have you studied or not no 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 so what do you study in the fluid dynamics then uh, fluids are one second so after pressure we we had bernoulli's theorem Okay, you and work. atmospheric pressure, gauge pressure, Pascal's law. Ah, uh, you guys went into that direction. Okay, okay, I get that. So, which which topic in that is not uh, clear to you? Uh, this one actually I was not. Uh, this one uh, PV is equal to NRT. There was this proof which we had. But uh, that and is, then uh, right. you're okay with that. Yes. Yes. A uh, tori cell is law. I didn't understand. Okay, suddenly we know. Actually, I'm not a fluids guy. Actually, but uh, okay. Yeah, but let me. What is that law? A tori a tori cell is law. Can you spell that? Ah uh, yes, uncle. T O R R I. Okay. C E L L I. Okay. Let's look into that. Okay. Because you see, I mean, it is, we, we should be going like, uh, we can understand anything. We should have a positive thought process with that. And then we start looking at it and understand with what we already know and connect with that. Do you see that? That is what going yes. to help us to understand everything. So, so I, I just opened the, the, the toy cell Torsali's law in the Wikipedia. Okay. Okay. This is a law or a theorem in fluid dynamics relating the speed of fluid flowing flowing from an orifice to the height of liquid above the opening. Isn't it? Yes. That is what the definition is. So the definition itself is going to help us to think about okay, the fluid flowing from an orifice to the height of the fluid. So let me use the whiteboard. So that is going to be a, let's say, if you have a container, right? And let's say there is a liquid. So there is a height for the liquid, isn't it? Total height, isn't it? Yes. And now, we can put a hole here or hole here or hole here. That is what we call as an orifice. Then the pressure here is going to be low. P, P low. And we go all the way down. It will be a P high. high. Yes. So that is what I mean immediately. So the P is going to be a function of H. Isn't it? 
meaning when the height is uh, when when you when you take a p at even at this point if you keep increasing the height of the water then this p value itself will increase that is what i have written here yes okay so the p at the different height is also different also when you have a p at particular level depth and that value will be a function of height that means if you increase or decrease the total height of the liquid that p value will change we should understand this function in both the ways do you see that yes sir you get the both the points i'm saying what is yes the, sir yeah now if you if you put a hole here and this liquid will be with a very low pressure it will go down like this okay if you put a hole here this will go down like this if you put a hole here this will go down like this you get that yes so now the velocity at which the water will be coming out will depend on the height isn't it yes okay that is what that theorem is connecting the oh. it's relating the speed of the fluid oh. flowing from an orifice okay. to the height of the liquid above the opening so they are talking about a particular height which they are saying that okay this is uh, height about so this is going to be our okay this is our uh, v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 is it okay yes so there is going until to be, one minute yeah one minute Yes, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's okay. So, I mean, also, I mean, it's uh, time for us to... So, what I would do, I mean, I, 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 I don't know whether you 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 looked into this uh, Wikipedia. It is explained a bit uh, in, a, in an interesting way. Okay, this this one. So, actually, I mean, think about it. How to, how to connect that? Because there is a velocity V1 because of the height above that orifice, this, this height. And then there is a height from here. This is H2. Do you catch that? Yes. And from the top, the height, other height is, this will be our H3. Okay. And from the top, this will be our H4. So from how much height, that is what it is connecting. Do you get that? I am not wrong. That is what they have said. The, uh, the last stage, the height of the fluid above the opening. Yeah, this is right. You are okay up to here. Yes, uncle. Okay, so now think about it. Let, let's take one particular case. So, this is actually the dynamics what we have studied in the solid that we need to connect. Let's say the liquid height is up to here and we have an this and it is going to flow like this, for example. Okay. Yes, uncle. Okay, so now don't you think that the height, this height, why they are connecting this height to the velocity here? Let's say, stop here. Do you get that? Yes, sir. And definitely there is going to be a mass the the above this, this. This particular amount of fluid will have a mass, isn't it? Yes, sir. 
and this whole thing mass is going to be attracted to the center of the earth g will be acting for that do you see what i'm saying yes sir okay so now that then definitely this this mass is having a potential energy which is mgh yes sir. okay and the liquid which is going to use that potential energy to convert into a kinetic energy at this point it is all completely potential energy okay which is equal to mgh and when it is coming and going to the ground at this level all all of them will converted into kinetic energy yes so that will be of mv square now okay also there is a liquid at the at the bottom also so we need to have a, a, a energy energy equilibrium equation for equation for for fluid because the one i said only this mgh connecting directly to of mv square works only when it is a uh, solid mass because the mass the mass will come down directly down they don't go through any fluid dynamics do you catch that so mgh converted completely into of mv square are you following this yes sir okay, but in this case there is a fluid dynamics going on because there is a rest of the fluid is also there rest of the fluid and the fluid is not completely coming down as a straight ground so it is going through a flow okay so now we need to include the energy equation for fluid this comes from the bernoulli's theorem okay yes so now look at the site i have sent to you try to connect these things and what they are explaining and uh, deriving look at that if you have any question about any particular part where it is not understandable please message me is it okay yes sir okay so try to make sense out of everything what you are going around okay yes sir quickly as formula 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 why it is so why this mathematical step why this mathematical steps gives us more sense do you get that yes sir okay okay then yes, message me i i will wait for yes, your message okay even if you understand everything also message me you are okay with yes, that yes sir okay 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 then bye thank you